the closest thing to real life that you can find in an interactive 3D product. And it's worth noting that this isn't just a skull on the outside, it's 22 individual bones which have to relate together. And so what that means is we also get uh, to see what's on the inside. And then also in the spaces in and between, such as the form in the canals, and you can see how all the different bones articulate together and form these interconnections. If you look here, this is the ethmoid bone. Um, it's the smallest bone in the body. It's infinitely complex, articulating with, I think, seven others. And what you can see here is how Matt was able to model on points of, of articulation where you can see openings of small, tiny foramina. And what I like is that you can even make out the air cells which exist within this bone, which make it one of the lightest as well. Having a skull which has so much detail, you know, what this allows is the application of different functionalities. But we not only now you just have parts, we have individually selectable canals and foramina. So if I select the mental foramen, here on the left-hand side, you get more information. This is important for students of dentistry if they want to learn you know the position of where to place nerve blocks. And you can see the teeth are also painted with parts, surfaces, and the important landmarks of the skull. Beyond that, if I hide a bone and go up one level, uh, we have origin and insertion points for muscles, but then also sutures. So if I were to click on the sphenoid bone, you can understand how it is articulating now with the frontal bone. And if I go one above that, you find cranial metric points, which are important uh, anthropological points of interest. If you look over to the left-hand side, you know it's now suddenly a very professional product. It's, it contains written content, which is important for students if they want to get what they need for exams. And it also contains expanded written content for every single structure. And I know this is uh, very important to educators because they want to make sure their students have the availability of this written content. And it's also referenced, which we've never had before. One area where, which we never had before was a correct representation of the vestibular cochlear organ situated here in your temporal bone in what's known as the tympanic cavity. So this uh, organ sits at a very certain particular angle. It's in a cavity with uh, very well-defined walls, floors, ceilings, and various structures passing in for you only see a very small selection here. So working from the outside in, you can see we actually have the tympanic membrane, your eardrum. And if I was to maybe start editing this and hide the temporal bone, hide the bony labyrinth, you can then reveal the vestibular cochlear organ. And zooming in, you can see the close relationship between the tympanic membrane, the ossicles, which then transmit vibrations that help create sound. And you can see the individual tiny ligaments that support these bones within the tympanic cavity. And what these detailed models provide is a deeper look at different tissues and systems. So zooming in, you can see a selection of different hair cells, all with different functions that help uh, produce sound and transmit it to the cochlear nerve or vestibular cochlear nerve. Here's an example of the retina, which is the layer of the back of the eye, which receives lights, turns it into electrical signals and onto the brain so you can see. But we not only provide the layer of the retina, we now also provide the photoreceptor cells that make up the retina. So you begin to see there's a story being told and we provide educators with a, um, a chain almost of different models that can help st bring students along in their, in their education. This is one of the best micro nano models in my opinion. I think it's so well designed and you can see how the different layers surround and support the brain, how the blood vessels travel in and between the arachnoid matter the arachnoid granulations, which reabsorb the cerebral spinal fluid into the venous system and layers of the scalp. One area we really wanted to improve upon was the actual cavities within the head. And you can see how mucosa line these cavities. 
it's often a pain point for a lot of students to try and work, even remember uh, what all these crevices and recesses are for. But what I think our model achieves over a 2D illustration, such as this one from Netter, Netter is that it, it gives context as to what is actually creating these folds. So down here, you can actually see that a system of different muscles and pulleys contribute to the folds of the palatopharyngeal and palatoglossal folds, which uh, kind of border the tonsil. You can see the different uh, conchae forming the turbinates and smaller details such as the limna nasi. And if you go up here, we even have color differentiation. We changed the color of the mucosa to highlight the fact that the olfactory mucosa is a little bit deeper shade of brown. It's these tiny details that kind of bring the model to life a little bit more. The eye is also a system full of pulleys. Um, however, we've shown those muscles before. What we've never shown though is the system of connective tissues that support the eye in place. Again, here's a 2D illustration. These kind of cross sections take a lot of abstract thought for a student to try and figure out, okay, so this is how one structure relates to another. Well, for us to do it in 3D, we have 22 you know, different structures here. If I move this out of the way, you can then begin to appreciate how these uh, connective system pulleys and supports begin to relate with the skull. We're not making structures in isolation, we're making these structures to actually relate to one another so you can see how they work. Overall, there's over 700 structures in the head and neck alone. It's more than any other region of the body and it's in a much more condensed area. Here you can see the, the network, almost like the subway network of arteries, veins and nerves that pierces a design for the head that has to fit perfectly among every other structure and anatomically correct. So I really want to give a big thank out to the, thanks to the team for this project. It's one of the biggest ones we've done and I'm very excited to see where this goes in the future and what we can do next. So thank you very much.